Hi everyone, I'm Hannah. Welcome to my allotment for another week's allotment vlog. Let's see what we got up to this week. Gosh, it's been one hell of a week. The weather has finally arrived. It's June and summer's here, like, like that. So we had one or two days at the end of last week as well. And then since then it's just been like gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. And the evenings have been warm. The nights have been fairly warm as well. Though we had one night when it went down to seven, but that's the anomaly. And I think tonight it's gonna be like 16 degrees. So yes, definitely time to get those uh, sensitive plants out. And uh, <laughs> did I manage it all? Spoiler, no, I did not. Hey, Raska. Huh? The dog is here with me today. Hmm? We'll see how we go. So the slugs, they went a little bit crazy when we had all that rain in May, like the populations exploded. Because it was quite a cold winter. They weren't really that active in terms of mating and stuff. So um, I was quite glad because <laughs> my early plantings in spring they did fine but now after may wow there's a lot of slugs and i find it works quite well i don't lose too much to slugs sorry can you see me um because i keep my beds clear and i remove the lower leaves off vegetable plants when they start to change color and all that sort of keeps the slugs from being attracted to come in i mean obviously you can have uh, bad luck and I think I lost one fennel, for example, and uh, some of the pea plants that I didn't tie up in time, um, they were just lying on the floor, right? They were lost, but in general, I'm fairly okay with the slugs, but I noticed them like just sitting, quite a few fat ones, just sitting on my um, first early potato plants. Very odd, I've never really like grown potato plants. They were just like sitting on top during the daytime. Um, something I've never seen before. So um, yeah, I dispatched those very quickly. But yeah, in general, the potatoes are doing fine now. They're loving this weather, but it's very clear on my potato bed what effect having grassy paths around your vegetable beds do. Um, because all the row, the whole row that's like, don't have the mulched path next to it where the grass is still growing are much smaller so they're not getting enough water and they're not getting enough nutrients because the invading grass I have got cooch grass which grows um, you know uh, have laterals going in into the bed so they're stealing some of that so that's why I've started the mulching project this year obviously I'm finished I'm supposed to mulch at least like 15 centimeters around the whole bed area I just haven't got around to it and I'm I'm noticing it on my potatoes but I'm glad to see it's working on the other side where it is mulched and they are as big as the ones in the middle so that's encouraging so we're getting there and I guess the warmer temperatures finally told the black fly that it was a good time to attack my broad beans. So they arrived, I saw a few, just a very few. I've never caught it this early before. And I took all the tops off my Aqua Dolce Long Pod. So those are the tall ones I grew from autumn. And a few days later, I actually saw them buzzing around the top of the field beans, which I also sowed in autumn. Uh, so I took all those tops off as well. This they haven't yet arrived on the shorter spring sown broad beans and field beans so i don't know if the height has something to do with it but in that case it's very encouraging because it means that they have more time to develop and wow they're growing quite fast now the spring sown they haven't caught up with the autumn sown but uh, they're getting there very quick now so as i was <laughs> have been mentioning now the last two weeks it's definitely time to plant the tomatoes in the greenhouse and I finally had the time to clear the large greenhouse out and wow, I mean, it took way longer. I didn't get time to plant the tomatoes that day. I just basically carried everything out. So, and then I had to tidy the plot because it was an absolute mess, like ridiculous mess. And it still is, even though I have tidied. But wow, yeah, I really need a shed, um, but we can't really put one up. Um, I mean, I guess I could get some sort of smaller 
a, you know, lockable thing maybe, but like, we do have one storage box at the back of the greenhouse, but it just is already full and I need to maybe have a clear out and uh, get rid of stuff I'm not using and things like that. Uh, it's another big job. But yes, finally, the large greenhouse is clear and I can finally, finally I could get in there and start thinking about how many... Bloody hell, that's loud. That's a tractor. It's that time of year. I could finally start thinking about how many tomatoes I could actually fit in there. And uh, yeah, the answer is a lot. <laughs> so I went for one of each of my varieties I'm growing, uh, the tall vine varieties, bar two. So I, I'm not gonna include uh, the list here. You can go on my Instagram. I did a post uh, that has all the varieties in there. But um, the ones, the two I didn't fit in with the two zebras, the green and the red zebra, so they were gonna have to grow outside. But I've at least I've got one of each of the other varieties in there. So that's good. That means that I'm hoping to get some good cropping from at least one of the plants. I'll grow them again, the ones I have doubles off outside and maybe even in the garden and we'll see what does well, what does better. So I've rigged up uh, some bamboo in the ceiling and around the side so I can tie some string and grow the tomatoes of that. So basically it's just a very simple kind of system where you just twist it around as it grows and it is quite easy if you bury the end of the string underneath the plant when you're planting it so I did that so I wouldn't recommend planting your tomatoes this close to each other as I, like I've done I think the minimum should be 40 centimeters but you know I'm gonna keep them tidy and I might have to water more we'll see but if you keep removing the lower leaves as they grow up they should keep quite um, quite a lot of ventilation going on so the problem when you put when you pack them in too tight is that you get an increased risk in uh, pests and disease problems for example fungal issues um, like blight is a higher risk if it's too crammed in and other things like if aphids gets in there and there's lots of plants you obviously you know it's much easier for them to, to jump about between the plants you know you get the drift there's so many diseases with tomato plants it's like most of them you you will encounter but most of them are not going to be deadly if you see what I mean <laughs> you're gonna get lots of lots of little uh, markings on the leaves and just know that everyone gets it some of them are worse than others of course so when I did the planting out uh, it was the hottest day of the year so far so we, I think we had 28 degrees here in Oxford and it was uh, 43 in the greenhouse um, but I only had my lunch hour to do it so I was like I just need to do it so I just I did I did it I did it and uh, <laughs> when I was doing it I was like oh my god this is just too hot for the tomatoes so tomatoes don't grow well above 35 degrees 30 really they want to be like 25 degrees is like perfect temperature for tomatoes um, that is just a little bit hot so basically they don't they don't die per se but they don't grow uh, and you obviously want your tomatoes to grow right so so the one thing that you can do is obviously ventilate and but I only had it, both windows and the door open all day uh, you can remove one of the glass as well uh, to increase ventilation if it's gonna be like tropical but one of the things that you might have to do and why I had to do two years ago when it was that hot in 2018 I had to put a shade net on my greenhouse and when I bought it on the Amazon and it came uh, it was literally just like, it just looked like scaffold netting. So any kind of netting or mesh that is quite uh, tight will work. You just want to shield the plants from a percentage of the sun, right? You don't want it to be in complete shade. Uh, so anything like, I don't know, mesh curtains or regular thin muslin curtains or something like that would work as well or even fleas i heard someone say works so if you have that spare um it's just to it's quite amazing how much it lowers the temperature in there so i uh, put it on the greenhouse last year in the beginning because you remember we had that really hot april may and i had to have it on because the seedlings were just like oh it was so hot in there but then I noticed like nothing was growing uh, when we got into June and I realized it's because 
the sun wasn't there. Like it was too cold in June. The sun uh, was too low, and I was basically cutting out too much sunlight. So I had to remove it, obviously, because it was such a poor summer. So after I finished the tomatoes, I had um, a cold non-alcoholic beer like Bex Blue. They're really, really good. If you haven't tried them before, have a go. I mean, it doesn't taste like a real lager or pilsner even, but it's quite tasty and it is very good for you because it still has all the minerals and things in it that that it makes beer sort of healthy apart from the alcohol. Uh, and there's nothing that quenches your thirst more, I think, when you're that warm. So I had that one of them and I was sitting there just outside the greenhouse it's like, like hiding in the shade a little bit and um, I saw all these dragonflies like you know they were mating so they were like hooked up together it's like so many of them I've never seen that many but I guess everything's just exploded now because the temperatures have risen so including the wildlife and maybe partly why we have so many of these things around now there's so much so many bugs around uh, is maybe because I've done no mow May basically I haven't mowed any of the grass on the allotment for all of May obviously now we're in June I still haven't done it <laughs> so it, it was um, an initiative to to uh, benefit insects but we're getting to the point now where the grasses are starting to set seed and you definitely don't want the seeds flying about on your plot because they're just gonna self seed everywhere on your beds so I need to get it mowed uh, ASAP now before it starts to um, you know spread about so <laughs> I'll need to do that and even if so it's been this hot right and they've been saying that we we can have thunderstorms but they haven't actually materialized so we haven't got any rain which is a shame um, that's you know, the perfect summer for me would be 25 degrees max during the day and then maybe 17 degrees at night with rain. <laughs> that would be like the ideal summer. Uh, are we ever going to have it though? I don't think so. But the warmer temperatures inside the greenhouse has meant that the, the strawberries I have planted in a hanging basket in there have started ripening now and I, I uh, harvested the first one. And wow, it's so nice. There's just nothing compares to homegrown strawberries. I actually left it a bit long because it gone almost a bit mushy, but it wasn't that um, brilliant deep red I was expecting, but that comes down to variety. It's just a different uh, color red. So now I know not to wait that long, but it was like, wow, it's so tasty. So I can't wait for my outdoor ones to start cropping because it looks like a bumper crop this year. They're very, like so many flowers. And if this weather holds now, it's gonna be good. Oh, and while I have your attention, if you're enjoying this video or if you're finding it useful or, you know, just like what I do, please give this video a like, give a thumbs up and uh, yeah, thank you very much. So the peas have started flowering. I mean, first of all, they have grown a lot. Uh, the deer that came for a visit la in last vlog and ate um, the, the flower seeds of the flower heads of the poppy also had a nibble on my one of my munch twos so the tops but they've actually recovered and they're now they're a little bit shorter than their neighboring munch two it only ate one of the munch two not the other one um i don't know it has a preference but they're starting to flower now uh, so i have flowers on the alderman which are white and i have flowers on the sugar magnolia which is that purple flower right and then um, i have flowers on the Oregon sugar pot is called, it's also white. And then there's um, also a purple flower on the the yellow munch too, which I was surprised about. I thought maybe they would have yellow flowers, but it's a purple flower as well. And then there's flowers as well on the uh, Hearst green shaft, uh, the dwarf pea, and they're also white. So we're getting there. And I poured some flowers. <laughs> they were stood outside uh, just needing water every day and I finally finally got around to planting them this week so they've gone into the lavender hedge because my ornamental alliums were just not good at, it's, it's probably due to the allium leaf miner they just haven't come up very well uh, there are some there but I you know and it would have looked gorgeous if they've all come up so it was a good idea I had and I'm maybe I'll try planting some more for next year give it another go we'll see uh, but yes the sunflowers have gone in between the lavender I think at some point the lavender will get too big to to do this but for now it's gonna look amazing so I've got the sunzilla the one with the ginormous head 
uh, like absolutely ginormous and then I've got China cat which has multiple heads which is good for cutting uh, and then there's two giant ones that I got sent seeds from because I complained how I never got a giant <laughs> sunflower so we'll see how they go and then I have evening sun which is a sort of medium height one um, with you know sun sunset shades you know so I grew that one last year and it's, it's quite it's a favorite so last autumn I planted lots and lots of garlic but I also planted nine bulbs of elephant garlic so I had bought elephant garlic the year before from Franchi Seeds but they never arrived and I forgot about them because I think they'd sold out after I had paid for the order uh, so I completely forgot about that and didn't chase it up or anything and then this year I bought some more from Sarah Raven I think it was so they arrived and then around the same time I got another packet from Frangie Seeds saying sorry for the delay and like a year later I get the delivery so I had quite a few actually people don't usually grow that many elephant garlic but you know I did uh, and they're all now flowering which is completely normal with elephant garlic it's something to be expected just like with hardneck varieties of garlic and it produces flower stalk so you need to cut it off so that it can concentrate on the bulb instead but it, it's um, elephant garlic doesn't store as well uh, as uh, softneck garlic anyway so you, it doesn't mean it does store but it doesn't store all year right just like hardneck garlic that's the difference between softneck and hardneck uh, softneck stores much better than hardneck garlic but the good thing about it is that you can eat those flowering shoots, they're called scapes. And the elephant garlic is more related to leeks than it is to garlic actually. So, but it did still have, I just, I just had them uh, this evening. It still did still have a flavor of a tang of garlic, but it was mainly like, a, like an oniony flavor. So I just fried them in some garlic. Uh, <laughs> fried them in some oil and just had them with my pizza, which was great. But yeah, I had to dig around as well. So uh, so the elephant garlic should be ready to harvest by the end of June, though with this year, you can never really tell. So uh, but the best way to check, obviously the, the leaves will go slightly yellow, um, but if you wait until the whole plant's gone yellow, no, it will have deteriorated. So and start rotting uh, or slugs can get to it whatever so you need to get them out before that happens and the best way to check is to dig around so i had to dig now and as expected there's a large bulb but it's still mono like one large like more like onion it hasn't split into cloves yet so that will happen at some point now during the next 30 days hopefully uh, and you can just have a dig around because all the roots come from the bottom like you won't disturb come come you won't disturb the the plant by digging it um, so that's very exciting. So it's the same with the garlic that I planted at the same time. Uh, end of June is a possibility for harvesting it all. So that's exciting. We're getting there. So I was supposed to have sowed more carrots in April? May? <laughs> One of them. I think April maybe. Anyway, I've, I didn't manage to get it done but now I have finally done it. So I cleared the purple sprouting broccoli from the winter brassica bed. This is the same bed that has the elephant garlic in. And uh, I have some November sown carrots as well in that bed. Germination was okay, uh, but they are growing now. But my spring sown carrots are larger, so that just shows it's better just to wait until spring to sow your carrots. But uh, June is still a good time to sow carrots. If you have some seeds, get them used up, get them sown. I'm gonna probably try sowing some in July as well, because I obviously still have a lot of seed. But I have a lot, lots of varieties, right? So I think I had eight varieties of carrot, plus some that root parsley, and then another row of parsnips. So I just do like a drill, and because it's dry, I pre-water the drill before I put the seeds in, and then cover it up and then water again. So because I have a lot of carrot fly on my plot, I have to mesh them. So and because the garlic, elephant garlic, is getting so tall. Usually I just put mesh right on top, but because the elephant garlic is getting so tall, I decided to build a cage anyway. And then later in autumn, I might be able to put brassicas in there again or something else that needs to overwinter under mesh. So we'll see. But yeah, so that's uh, finally done. And at the end of that bed, I put my glass gem corn. So that's far enough away from the other sweet corn, I hope, to not be uh, 
interfering with the flavor of those so that's that'll be exciting um probably be a november harvest again of those glass gem corn we'll see i still have loads from last year i need to eat more popcorn and uh, so my spring sown turnips sadly started bolting so i had to pull them all up and quite a few of them i think half of them are not edible like they are uh, when they when plants like that start to bolt not when root vegetables start to bolt they don't produce the the root that you that you're after so a lot of them were i couldn't keep and some of them were eaten as well but we still have a hell of a lot of turnips to get through so uh, that'll be fun maybe do like a, some sort of uh, turnip gratin or turnip mash or something like that with it because it is quite a lot but at least it gives me space in the bed for putting something else in so that's always always handy and next to them are the my um, my calabres or my my broccoli this is what's part of the grow along for life that I run through my mailing list like a uh, yeah a monthly uh, a monthly email that comes through and basically these ones were the first to be sown in for the February email and they're now starting to form heads which is really exciting because I did as an experiment I sowed some calabres different variety but still calabres in September last year and they have overwintered and they overwinter fine and they're actually yeah say maybe twice as tall as my marathon F1 but they are still not forming any heads so that was a complete waste of time waste of space probably i don't even know if i'm gonna get anything from them they're gorgeous plants like really lush and big and whatever but no heads yet we'll see so again it just shows that it's better to wait to sow in spring for some vegetables than to try to overwinter them obviously it will depend on the kind of winter you have but yeah spring really is the time to sow and I did sow, uh, as I said before, my spring sown carrots. So this is Amsterdam forcing, so I sowed them end of February or March, probably March. And uh, they are now getting ready. They've, they've been slow because of the spring we've had. They've been under mesh the whole time. Fleece to start with and mesh. But they are coming now and I harvested the first low one. So I need to start doing some thinnings and uh, I usually give those to the dog. She loves carrots, <laughs> but it was very tasty, I must say. And uh, they're getting uh, the plants, the parsnips are next to them. The calabres, the parsnips and the carrots, and they all need to be meshed. So I had to upgrade to my larger mesh over them because they were getting too big. So I did that as well. So that's always, always a good tick off the list of things to do. And I know I said, uh, if it was last week or a couple of weeks ago, that it was time to remove all fleece, if you have any more fleece on your plants. Obviously, I've forgotten to do my onions um, that have been protected by fleece for like three weeks or something. Uh, but they were fine, actually. They've been grown really well under there. And uh, the other thing that's grown well <laughs> are the weeds, like the, the bindweed and the thistles. So because you can't see, because they got mesh, you just don't see that you need to weed as well. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so I finally got in there and got the mesh ready and I planted out my few red onions I have. So my red onion seeds just didn't germinate and these ones I got sent from a friend on Instagram and they were such poor germination too and they were fresh seed. So I don't know what's going on this year, but it's just really, really poor germination all around. But anyway, I got a few and I've planted them out as well. So they're all multi-sown and now they're covered in nice mesh. And obviously the mesh I got didn't fit, so I had to do a double, uh, hopefully still okay. The allium leaf miner should now not be active, but since we have such a cold spring, you never know, they could have a longer activity period. They will be active again in autumn. So. For your leeks, for example, you might need to cover them. Uh, or if you have overwintering onion or onion sets, it uh, might be something you want to think about if you've been visited by the allium leaf miner before. But yeah, so I was just tying in the peas again because they grow like a foot a day or something. And I noticed some curious looking eggs on, on one of the leaves. And um, yeah, I had to like have a quick Google. And it turns out they're probably shield bug eggs 
either green or another color obviously and uh, so that's exciting that's a that's a beneficial insect so definitely leave those there and when i was taking the photograph of them um <laughs> i just realized that in the background there's a munch two coming so they are coming we're getting there it's going to be a first pea harvest very soon obviously munch two comes first but it's exciting yeah so maybe next week's vlog will involve me eating some munch two peas isn't that great? Anyway, I'll see you then. Hope you have a great warm weekend and uh, do some gardening, why don't you?